there are a number of different ways to define magic. Some are more useful than others, and of course some ways are more appropriate in different contexts. I'm going to be talking to you all in this video today about the occult and magical practitioner usage of the word. What is magic is an incredibly simple and straightforward question, but I would argue that simplicity is a bit of a deception. There is such an incredible wealth of history and diversity of thought around this particular subject. As a magical practitioner myself, I'm going to be focusing on the context and meaning I find most useful in my path, which is of course ceremonial magic. I hope this is a springboard for you all to go off and do some study on your own, so let's get to it. The spelling of magic with a K is often associated with the famous and controversial English occultist Aleister Crowley. There was a lot to say about Crowley. He was a queer man in the Victorian era when you just simply couldn't be queer publicly. Although far from perfect, he lived an unapologetic life dedicated to the study of esotericism and spirituality all over the world. Some even consider him a prophet. He was a poet, mountain climber, painter, occultist, and ceremonial magician. He left a deep mark on Western esotericism to this day. A bit of Crowley is in everything from Wicca to chaos magic, so he is undoubtedly a great place to start. Crowley was not the first person to spell magic with a K. Before we had standardized spelling, you find in dictionaries and stuff like that, you would see magic spelled with a K pop up in a variety of different places. Crowley spelled it this way specifically to distinguish the work he was doing from stage magic. The focus of his work was not performing magic tricks to amuse audiences. He was using spiritual and religious resources to transform and achieve particular results. When talking about magic, this transformation could be one of internal spiritual change or external and material. Crowley laid out my all-time favorite definition of magic in Magic and Theory and Practice. He says magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. Well, what the heck does that mean? Basically, he believed each person had something called their true will. True will is a person's grand destiny in life or their divine life purpose. That is a whole big thing to unpack by itself, so stick with me on that brief explanation of true will, although I assure you, if you dig deeper, there's a lot more to learn about and uncover there. But essentially, Crowley believed that if you're taking actions in alignment with your will, you will have the inertia of the whole universe to assist you. Things will just click into place, make sense, or just generally go your way. So within this framework, he laid out every intentional action you take in alignment with your will can be thought of as a magical act. For example, you watching this video to learn something new and improve your understanding of something could be a magical act. The definition is on the surface rather broad. In my opinion, it captures both the goal of some magic and its method rather nicely. Crowley laid out a lot of ideas on magic and used that funky spelling with a K. Kenneth Grant built upon the significance of using magic with a K in his book, The Magical Revival. I'm mentioning this not only because Kenneth Grant and his wife, Steffi Grant, had a notable impact on much of modern magic practice today, but the Grant's association of K being the 11th letter in the alphabet and thus connecting to this thing called the great work often gets misattributed to Crowley. This exploration of the deeper meaning of this particular spelling was indeed Grant, not Crowley. Kenneth Grant was a ceremonial magician, poet, novelist, and writer. He is best known for his unique approach in merging the artistic and fantastical with his occult work. Feel free to pause the video to read some of the excerpts from The Magic Revival, but essentially he writes about the spelling reflecting the precise nature of the magical current Crowley worked in and later himself. So I think Grant and Crowley lay the foundation of a lot of the modern stuff being talked about today. If you knew what you're looking for, then you'll find their influence in almost everything, even things you wouldn't expect to find them in, like witchcraft. But of course they don't exist in a vacuum. They come from a long line of rich history of ceremonial magic in particular. I'd be doing you a great disservice in this video if I did not mention this guy named Agrippa. In 1510, Agrippa started talking about this thing called ceremonial magic in the third book of his three books of occult philosophy. Agrippa was a Renaissance philosopher and occultist who was particularly concerned with studying the powers of magic and its relationship with religion. At the time he published 
published this book, he was studying Kabbalah and Hermeticism. Agrippa uses the term magic to describe a series of practices and operations that could be performed. Magic, in a sense, was something to do. Agrippa sought to reform occult philosophy and magic for contemporary use, and arguably he was quite successful. For example, you see extensive usage of his teachings and choice of language in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which was the group Crowley was a part of, and many more notable historic figures. So there's no way I can do the full history of magic and its usage, although extremely fascinating. Uh, it's just such a short little video, I don't have time, but this is sort of a fun little ride through a lot of different things and weaving them together in a way I thought was meaningful, but it's by no means exhaustive. So returning to that original fundamental def definition I laid out at the beginning of the video by Crowley, um, Dion Fortune uh, has a very similar sounding definition. She was, of course, a occultist, an author, and a lot of her influences would be found prevalent through modern paganism and Wicca. So she says, magic is the art of causing changes in consciousness in conformity with will. So sound familiar, right? So when we're talking about these processes of transformation and causing change to occur in conformity with will, we're not talking about making fireballs shoot from your hands or causing objects to levitate, nothing like that. We're talking about taking steps to bring about an outcome you want. That outcome could be internal, such as wanting more self-esteem, or that outcome could be external, such as wanting a specific bank account balance. Long Milo Duquette in The Keys to Solomon's Keys put it really nicely. Magic is a psychological art form, not a belief system. Unless, of course, you consider the concept of cause and effect to be a belief system. So I just really enjoyed that quote from him. And to further build on this, Richard Kaczynski in The Wiser Concise Guide to Aleister Crowley says this, Magic provides the tools to accomplish two things. First is to know thyself, to use techniques like journaling, meditation, ritual, and invocation to identify your personal strengths and successes and thereby discover your true will. The second is to use the same tools to accomplish your will. The tools used in the practice of magic are as diverse as the practitioners themselves and their intentions with the work. I think some of the basics and fundamental tools you'll see used are what Richard talked about in that last quote, which is things like meditation and journaling. So where does that funky wand and other stuff come into the mix? When performing a magical operation to bring about some kind of intended change, magical practitioners can utilize external implements to externalize their intention. All of these tools I'm holding up are symbols. They're empty. It's the work in context that fills them with meaning. Manipulating tools like this in a ritual setting can be a way to imprint your intentions on yourself, psychologically speaking, or spiritually. But the mechanism by which this works is debated, and different people believe different things. The short and sweet version is that change can occur internally through psychological methods or externally through acts of spirit forces, gods, or goddesses. I'm specifically holding up tools used in ceremonial magic here. In this case, the meaning of these particular items is quite deep as they correspond to a lot of different things. I won't go into everything here that could possibly mean in all contexts, but to give you a taste of what these things might be used for in a ritual and what they correspond to, well, here are some ideas here. The wand represents will and the element of fire. The dagger is intellect and air. The cup is emotion and water. The disc is the material world and earth. These are, of course, Golden Dawn correspondences, and in other paths and other traditions, there is, you'll find all kinds of variation here. So, of course, magic can be done without all these fancy implements and things and ritual tools. All of these out here are just simply options you have, and you might find useful in your own magical work uh, if you choose to go there. So, Donald Michael Craig has a great quote in Modern Magic. He says, Magic is not something you do. Magic is something you are. Ultimately, the beliefs around what magic is and what it looks like is as diverse as the people practicing it. 
This video covers my thoughts as a ceremonial magician and practicing occultist, but it's important to remember that my thoughts don't reflect everyone else's. I hope you feel empowered to go out there and discover your own personal truths. Maybe this even means doing a little magic. I'd like to leave you with a few more quotes as food for thought. This one is a quote taken from Rodney's Abrahadabra in which he says, Magic is a subtle and curious thing, and often works in ways you do not expect, and at times you do not expect. But it always works. I think David Shoemaker touches nicely on this idea of being magic and mindfully inhabiting what we already are. In Living Thelema, he says, Alternatively, think about yourself as a force of nature. Wind blows, water flows, fire burns, and acid corrodes. What is it that you do to the world? Thank you so much for joining me on this discussion of what is magic. It's always a joy. Feel free to follow me on any of my numerous social media platforms or support me on Patreon. The books I've mentioned in this video on, are all below. You can find them in the description as well as my socials and anything else. I also included a few other extra recommendations in case you want them. Uh, as always, I am the center of expression for the primal will to good. And so are you.